Imagine yourself walking through a gymnasium and there are a whole bunch of people playing different sports. Suddenly a soccer ball flies towards you from your right and hits you in the face. Recovering from the initial hit, a tennis ball ricochets from the wall, bounces straight towards you, and hits you right on the nose. Then as you start running towards the exit of the gym in fear of getting hit with another flying projectile, someone has spiked a volleyball towards you from your left and you fall over once again as you get hit for the third time. A relevant quantity in these situations is the velocity of each ball, which is a vector quantity that expresses how fast each ball is and its direction of motion. For example, the soccer ball was coming from your right had a speed of 10 meters per second. Describing speed as a vector would turn speed into a velocity. Then the velocity of the soccer ball would be 10 meters per second westward. Velocities could also describe the tennis ball and the volleyball that hit you as well. Let's say the tennis ball had a speed of 20 meters per second and the volleyball had a speed of 15 meters per second then the velocities would be 20 meters per second southward for the tennis ball and 15, per, 15 meters per second eastward for the volleyball. We can represent this with arrows. The higher the magnitude of the vector, the longer the arrows are. For example, the tennis ball's vector arrow is twice as long as a soccer ball because the tennis ball speed is twice of that of the soccer ball. Let's say we're playing soccer with a friend and we practice kicking the ball to a point. There are two ways. You could pass it to a friend, then have them kick it to position. Or you could kick it there yourself. The direct kick can be seen as the resultant vector of two component vectors in the horizontal and vertical direction. We typically add vectors from head to tail. Let's practice adding some vectors. Here are two vectors, a and b. What happens when we add them together? First, I copy the a vector arrow, then I link the head to the tail of b vector arrow, and then I draw a line connecting from the starting point to the end point. The resultant vector is in red. Notice what we mean by head to tail. We draw the component vectors like connecting the dots in the direction of the arrows. Then draw the resultant arrow from the start to the end. Vector subtraction works the same way as addition, except when subtracting vectors, the vector with a negative sign attached to it needs to be flipped over, or rotated 180 degrees. Let's try subtracting the same a and b vectors we had previously. What happens when we subtract the two vectors, a minus b? Again, let's copy the a vector arrow first. Before we copy down the b vector arrow, there is a negative sign beside the b vector, meaning it should be flipped or rotated 180 degrees. After the flip or 180 degree rotation, the negative b vector, which is in blue on the left, is what we want to add head to tail with the a vector arrow. And just like what we did with vector addition, we draw the red resultant vector from the start to the end point. Here is a quiz for you to solve on your own. I highly encourage you to pause the video and attempt it before we go through the answer. Alright, I assume you've paused the video and tried it on your own. The answer here is D. So why is the answer D? Let's go through the notions of adding vectors again. Copy vector A, and since there is no negative sign beside vector B, you can copy the vector B arrow as it is shown here. Add them head to tail and draw the resultant vector from the start to the end point you will find the resultant vector will match that of answer D. So the next thing here is a demo of this FET simulation which can be found under the Courses tab under Week 2, then look at R02 Week 2 concepts under the Vector Addition and Subtraction Analytical Methods tab. Scroll down the page and you will find the simulation. 
you'll need Adobe Flash Player for this to work. To get started, on the top right where it says grab one, click and drag an arrow into the space in the middle. You can shorten or extend the arrow. Notice when you do this, the magnitude of the vector which corresponds to the R at the top changes. The values beside that are the angle with respect to the x-axis, the magnitude of the vector in the x-direction, and the magnitude of the vector in the y-direction respectively. You can change the direction of the arrow by click and holding on the head of the arrow and dragging it around. Let's grab another arrow from the bin and try to add it. Click and checkmark the show sum on the right to have the resultant vector arrow appear in green. It fits into our vector addition diagram very nicely. The component display on the right lets you see the x and y component vectors for every individual vector in our vector addition diagram. You can have them shown on the left side of the vectors, the right side, or have them stay on the x and y axis. Components are important when we do numerical calculations with vectors later. You cannot simply add the magnitudes or lengths of two vectors when the vectors are in different directions. Here is an example. Imagine two tugboats are pulling a cruise ship out of the harbor with the same force. The angle between the ropes of the two tugboats is 25 degrees. What is the force on the cruise ship? To find the answer, we need to add these forces as vectors. Let's use the FET simulation to help draw the vector diagram for this example. I'm going to let these two arrows represent the force of the tugboats on the cruise ship. The angle between the two arrows is 25 degrees, since the theta value at the top is 12.5 degrees with respect to the x-axis for both arrows, adding up to 25 degrees. You can see that the force on the cruise ship, which is a resultant vector, is not twice the force due to each boat. You can also see that the final x and y components follows from adding the individual components. You can press the clear all button to clear out all the vector arrows that were created 